Hi, my name is Ashok. I am from Phoenix Training Institute. We are providing free classroom training in Mumbai for uh, one entire month for CFA aspirants so that they themselves can decide if they wish to continue this certification. Please feel free to contact us for uh, further details. Thank you. So I am explaining the format of uh, cash flow from operations in this video uh, using direct method. So cash flow from operations direct method so there are two methods one is direct method another one is indirect method so i'm explaining the format for cash flow from operations using direct method so the format goes like this uh, first is cash collected so total cash collected okay from this total cash collected what you need to do is uh, you have to deduct cash paid to the suppliers cash paid to the suppliers you have to deduct then you have to deduct cash paid uh, as uh, wages and other all operational reasons whatever transactions you are incurring so over here i am taking the example of wages then cash paid to cash paid as interest so this is financing cost so this is operational cost all these are operational wages is an example of operational this is financing interest is an example for financing cost and then cash paid as taxes cash paid as taxes and then whatever is left out that will be cash flow from operations so this is using direct method okay so from the cash collected total cash collected we are reducing all this all these expenses and net what we get is cash flow from operations now the question is how do i calculate cash collected so that's what i'm going to explain now all this format now so how do i find out cash collected now so cash collected is uh, this is called inverted y method what i'm going to do now so cash collected is uh, is is connected with uh, accounts receivable so opening accounts receivable so opening account receivable whatever i have got say let's say for example opening account receivable is uh, 9000 and then uh, sales so total sales that happened total sales uh, let's say Total sales happened for 1 lakh. Okay, so total amount comes to 1 lakh 9000. Now, from this, closing account receivable is let's say uh, 10,000. So, if I say closing account receivable is 10,000, that means this much I am supposed to receive. Okay, this much cash I am supposed to have because I am supposed to receive through account receivable 9000 and total sales 1 lakh. So, 1 lakh 9000. From this closing account receivable, so this much I am yet to receive. So, that means remaining all I have received. So, cash uh, received will be 1 lakh 9000 minus 10,000. So, that will come to 99,000. So, this 99,000 is cash received okay cash received now the next one is cash paid to suppliers right so here this is cash collected or cash received cash collected cash received one and the same then uh, next one is cash paid to supplier so in order to find out cash paid to suppliers so cash paid to suppliers so you have to think about here accounts payable so opening accounts payable so opening accounts payable let's say opening accounts payable is 5000 now opening accounts payable is 5000 then the total purchase that you are doing so total purchase so that means you are already supposed to pay 5000 now you are you are making a purchase of uh, you know let's say yeah you are making a purchase of let's say 38,000 so total comes to uh, 43,000 that you are supposed to pay 
Now, when you are supposed to pay 43,000, imagine closing accounts payable is 9,000. So, if closing accounts payable is 9,000, then 43,000 minus 9,000 will be called as cash paid to suppliers. So, cash paid to suppliers will be uh, 43 minus 9,000 will come to 34,000. So, this is cash paid to supplier. Now, total purchase may not be directly given in the question. Okay. So, how do I find out total purchase? Accounts payable and accounts, you know, accounts payable information will be given in the balance sheet. So, so but if total purchase is not given, then how do I find out total purchase? So, in order to find out total purchase, remember total purchase is linked with inventory. So, opening inventory, let's say my opening inventory is something like 7000 plus now I am going to do total purchase. So, total purchase because this purchase will be added to inventory, right? So, uh, total purchase comes to, let's say total purchase 38000. So, 38,000, suppose if this is not given, so how I will find out is, if this purchase is not given, over here I directly took purchase, but suppose, you know, if it is not given, let's see how I am going to calculate. So, I need to find out total purchase. Now, opening inventory and total purchase, whatever balance I get, that will be segregated into, you know, uh, it will go here as closing uh, inventory, Let's say closing inventory is uh, 5000. Now, if closing inventory is 5000, here left hand side it will be categorized as cost of goods sold. Okay, because total inventory overall, I mean overall opening inventory and total purchase will be categorized as COGS and uh, closing inventory. And COGS value will be given in the income statement. Uh, cost of goods sold is let's say it is 40,000. If this is 40,000, so overall here this total should be 45,000. How 45? It is the addition of these two values. Addition of these two values, 40,000 and 5,000. So, it will come to 45,000. So, because this is 45,000 and opening inventory is 7,000, so my total purchase will be 38,000. So, this is how I can find out. It's like fill in the blanks. So, that 38,000, I can further utilize here, over here in the accounts payable. So, this is how I am supposed to calculate total purchase. Okay. Now, next one is operational expenses. So, operational expenses here I have taken the example of wages. In the format, in the format I have taken the example of wages. So, here it is. After supplier, I am, I am, I am going for wages or operational expenses. So, wages is very simple. All I need to do is opening uh, wages payable opening wages payable which I will get it in the balance sheet current liability so let's say opening wages payable is something like 8000 then I will add wages expenses for the current year so wages expenses is let's say 5000 this I will get it from the income statement wages expenses now that will be you know divided into two parts one is Closing wages payable, closing wages payable that I am supposed to still pay. So, 8000 I am supposed to already pay, 5000 in incurred this year. So, overall it is 13000 that I am supposed to pay. But then I am, you know, I am mentioning here closing wages payable is 4500, let's say. So, that means I am supposed to still pay 4500. Then how much I must have paid? So, that will come on the left hand side, wages paid. Wages paid will be 13, this 13,000 minus 4,500, it will come to uh, 8,500. 8,500 is wages paid. Okay, so this is how I'm, how I'm supposed to calculate operational expenses. Next one is interest, financing expenses, interest. So, interest perspective, opening interest uh, payable. This is also in the same way only, opening interest payable. Now, that can be categorized into two parts uh, here, I mean inverted Y, opening interest payable plus uh, interest expenses, okay, interest expenses, 
so opening interest payable is let's say 3000 and interest expense is let's say 1000 so total 4000 uh, 4, is the interest i'm supposed to pay but then the closing interest payable says let's say 3500 so that means the interest that i'm that i have actually paid interest paid is 500 so cash interest paid is 500 okay so this is how i'm supposed to do for interest then uh, the last one was tax so in the format if you see so i have done so far all this cash collected or cash received cash paid to supplier cash paid as wages cash paid as interest now the last one is cash paid as taxes okay so how do i calculate cash paid as taxes so cash paid as taxes is little uh, you know like complicated one cash paid as taxes uh, it will have opening opening tax payable opening tax payable okay then from that opening tax payable i am supposed to add opening uh, deferred tax liability opening deferred tax liability uh, i am not explaining what is deferred tax liability all such uh, you know this requires a different video which i will explain in another one okay so opening deferred tax liability then uh, if there is a deferred tax asset also you can do minus opening deferred tax asset if at all that is given then so these are all the opening and then uh, that year's uh, tax expenses so add tax expenses now this tax expense is equal to uh, tax expense is equal to tax payable uh, so this tax expense which is equal to tax payable uh, tax payable uh, tax payable uh, tax expense will be given in the income statement anyways so tax expense is equal to tax payable plus change in deferred tax liability minus change in deferred tax asset okay change in deferred tax assets this is the formula but then this tax expense will be anyways given in the uh, income statement okay so i am going to you know uh, include all these numbers and then on the right hand side it will be closing uh, deferred tax liability then similarly if deferred tax asset is given then you minus it minus closing deferred tax asset and then uh, closing uh, tax payable tax payable so what i will get on the left hand side is tax paid cash tax cash tax paid i will get on the left hand side okay so this is little complicated but this is this is how it is uh, this is for tax calculations all right Thank you so much for your time.